self-destructs, kamikazes, stock trading, whatever you want to call them, right from the start they've led to some of the most exciting, dramatic smash plays that you can find. And with Ultimate having more characters than ever, that also means there are more opportunities for self-destruct plays than ever. So what I've done is I've gathered up a list of every single reasonable way I think you can trade a stock away with your opponent, and we're going to rank them all up against each other, going purely off their self-destruct properties. Usually when I've done these kinds of specific rankings, I've included everything the move is capable of, but this time around, no, 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 we're getting rid of recoveries, we're getting rid of the more conventional uses, this is just purely along the lines of, I feel like trading my stock for my opponent's stock right now, how good is the move at doing that? There was a bit of room for interpretation when I was assembling the candidates for this list because essentially if you want to go hard enough, basically any move can become a self-destruct move, so I had to go by some guidelines. A few of these included that if you're doing a dive kick and your character can short hop off the ledge and survive afterwards, well then that's not a real self-destruct move. If missing it will make you lose your stock but you survive if the attack connects, well same deal, that doesn't really count. Moves that put you in a special fall do count, but not ones where you generally be able to drift back to the stage so you'll notice the vast majority of the ones that I've included here kill off the side rather than the top. Moves that rely on something like wind to work, those don't count because we're playing with a hazards off rule set. Explosives are on the list, but low powered explosives that aren't designed to kill at realistic percents aren't uh, exactly what you call a realistic kill percent is a bit up to interpretation again, but my interpretation at the end of the day, although if you think there is something I genuinely missed, please let me know. Now much more to say, let's get into it. <laughs> This video talks about a lot of the most over-the-top, dangerous things you can do to your opponent in Smash, so the sponsor ended up being kind of perfect here. This video is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. With over 100 offices nationwide, 800 local lawyers, and enough resources to follow any case to the end, they're here to fight for you to get the justice you deserve. They've recovered over $15 billion, yes, that's with a B for their clients, and the best part is that you don't pay a dime unless they win your case. No upfront costs, no sign-up fees, you don't pay for calls or meetings, nothing. Let's say, I don't know, a portly biker bites you, or a guy dressed in spandex gives you a flaming kick to the sternum. In a game? Hilarious! In real life? Terrifying. You get what I'm going for here, but these are lawyers, I can't show anything from Nintendo. Morgan & Morgan have modernized the injury law process, letting you submit a claim in 8 clicks or less without ever having to leave the couch. Get Morgan & Morgan fighting for the compensation that you deserve for your biker bites, or kick burns, or more realistic things like... <clears throat> Car crashes! Medical malpractice... Workplace injuries, nursing home abuse. You see why I tried to keep this light? You can go to Morgan and Morgan at ForThePeople.com slash talk using my special link in the description and pinned comment, or by dialing Pound Law, that's Pound 529, and get representation that will fight for you today. Let's start off with what I think in a lot of people's minds will be the quintessential self-destruct move, Kirby's Inhale. So what I like to call the little brother strategy of just hanging on the ledge and throwing out Inhale over and over again and hoping they walk into it, that's gone way downhill in the modern game since Ledge Invincibility is no longer unlimited, but it still works a surprising amount. The grab range isn't enormous on Inhale, but it's big enough, and if Kirby gives up Ledge Invincibility to go for an Inhale, his multiple jumps and decent spacing aerials do give him some other opportunities for mix-ups as well. For you to truly just drag your opponent down to the depths from the ledge, you both need to be at relatively high percent so your opponent needs to have a terrible mash because you can mash out of inhale, but it does happen. The more reasonable way to get a true stock trade is to intercept them as they're trying to recover. Inhale has a very persistent hitbox, so it is a thing. It is a pretty gimmicky thing to go for, although to be fair that applies to the vast majority of moves that are going to go on this list, but it's relatively reliable compared to a lot of other options like this. Being a command grab that goes through shields and can be used at the ledge is a big deal. There are some reliability issues with trying to drag your opponent down at lower percents, which kind of stops me from doing S tier, but I think a very solid A tier on this one. You do see it at least sometimes show up in real proper competitive sets, and by the standards of the moves on this list, that's pretty good. And then of course we've got King Dedede's Inhale. Used in essentially the exact same way when we're talking about self-destructs, but there are a couple of differences. First off, King Dedede is just a stronger character at the ledge in general. Gordos are a nice addition, and he also has much larger hitboxes than Kirby, so the threat of a Dedede side at the ledge is more pressure on the opponent compared to Kirby. And whereas Kirby's a very floaty character, King Dedede is actually a very fast faller, so he can drag his opponents down much further with him. I don't think these are enough to move at a tier above Kirby, although just for the record, King Dedede's, I would would put a little higher up, although this list is not ordered. I guess we'll just wrap these guys up. First off, Kirby's Final Cutter. Generous hitbox, and it covers a lot of space on the way up and down, and if you connect with the sweet spot, it's a pretty reasonable kill move. It's got some weaknesses though. First off, it's a pretty good kill move, but it's not a near guaranteed kill on the sweet spot, unlike some of these other drag down moves that we're going to look at later. And also, unlike some of those, the drag down potential there is nowhere near as good on the sour spot. It's disruptive and can still potentially take a stock, but again, it's not a near guaranteed thing, and it doesn't 
doesn't really have anything in terms of reliable setups into it, and it's kind of slow to start up. It can create some fairly reasonable checkmate situations for your opponent, and it's not the hardest thing in the world to connect. Not the best of these that we're going to look at today, but all things considered, at least for the moment, I think B tier, that may get reevaluated later. Checking in during editing to say that, yeah, at the end of the video, there's going to be a bit of a rebalance once we see how the entire list shakes out. And then we get to the Super DDD jump, and this can technically create some of the same checkmate scenarios as Kirby can, but realistically, that's a pure stunt thing. You're essentially never going to see it in a real match. The one thing that it really does have going in its favor, though, is that DDD is a pretty good shield break character, and he has a zero to death shield break if you wants to go for a kamikaze situation that relies on Super DDD Jump to actually finish it off because it is extremely powerful. The other thing to note about that though is that DDD is a super heavyweight. He obviously has extremely powerful moves to begin with, including one of the strongest forward smashes in the entire series. So in practice, even if he does get a shield break, which is not the hardest thing for DDD to do, there's a very narrow window where you really want to be going for Super DDD Jump. That niche is enough to put it into C tier because it does have a valid role to fill, but it's not a standard thing to be going for by any means. Let's do the spin attacks. Link, Young Link, and Toon Link. These all have somewhat different roles to play on stage, but off stage, they all work essentially the same way. Some differences in power and distance and all that stuff, but they do the same thing, which is drag your opponent into the sky, then launch them very far sideways. And they're really good at doing that. They have a lot of knockback on them, and you can bring your opponent closer to the blast zone before you send them off. And on top of that, they have setups into them. Off stage, Link and Young Link in particular can use neutral air to force your opponent into what's essentially a checkmate situation a lot of the time. Their neutral airs are pretty good tools to begin with, so this is pretty consistent, and it starts killing again very early. And they can go for these same kinds of interruptions with their boomerangs that they can angle, or they have bombs that they can drop on their opponent for different kinds of setups between the different characters, and they're all pretty quick to start up and cover tons of space, especially Adult Link. He's got some fancier bomb stuff than the other two that can start from on the stage more and still leads into a guaranteed self-destruct sequence if he feels like it. These are all just good moves to begin with, and as far as kamikaze moves go, they perform extremely well there. I think all three of these are going to get a nest here. Even without their projectile setups, they'd still be easier to connect than a lot of stuff on here. Speaking of projectiles, Link's bomb. So in moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, this is an incredible item. I think it's one of the best items that any character can pull, but as far as being a self-destruct option, not so much. There are absolutely scenarios where you'd be like, hey, we're both at hypersense, but I'm a stock up. Let me just pull the trigger on an explosive and blow us both up and I'll win. That's a reasonable situation to be in. There's a fair amount of detonation time on this. And while it's a strong move, it's not the absolute best raw kill move out there. Its strength is much more putting your opponent into a bad situation. So if you want to go for a stock trade with it, both you and your opponent need to be at pretty hypersense, in which case it's starting to get even riskier to go for. And again, reminder, those are the only kinds of situations I'm looking after this video in particular. The other point in its favor is, again, it's got synergy with his spin attack, so he can kind of chain them together into a different kind of kamikaze kill, but overall, I don't think that's really enough to salvage it. Strange to put it in F tier, not many lists where you're going to see it show up that low, but there's a pretty specific list. Me Sword Fighter's Hero Spin, I guess we'll throw that one in there. This feels like a custom move from Smash 4, there were a lot of those up specials that traded off travel distance for increased power, and this is very much in that mold. The power is obviously great because it means it's essentially a guaranteed kill if it connects off stage at anything resembling a reasonable percent, but the lack of height on this one is a pretty big deal because being able to cover your opponent trying to go over you is a major strength that the spin attacks have. And as far as offstage interruptions go, Me Sword Fighter has them, Chakram can definitely put you in those kinds of similar situations, and his down air performs somewhat of a similar function to Link and Young Link's lingering neutral air, and his own neutral air can also do it. It's a reasonable edge guarding tool, but it's not the absolute best out there. It's certainly a substantial downgrade from the links. I think it gets downgraded to A tier, and the main reason for that is the height differential. Again, being able to cover more space when your opponent is trying to get over you to come back on stage is a huge deal, but still solid. While we're talking about things that kill early, Ness is PK Thunder, so we'll put Lucas's up there too. These are pretty unreliable, even when your opponent is in a tricky situation trying to get back to the stage. You need to spend a lot of time lining up your angle. Now, the strength that Ness has in his favor here is if it does connect, the opponent is just dead. It's one of the absolute strongest moves in the entire game. So that kind of cheese gives it a legitimate niche, very narrow one, but it exists, and every once in a while you will see something like that show up in a competitive set. Now, Lucas's travels a lot farther, so in theory he can hit opponents much further away than Ness's, but I don't think the range really matters that much because your window to line this up is not that great to begin with, and by the time Lucas approaches anything resembling his final travel distance, his opponent has had time to react to it and get out of the way far more than with Ness. Going for it from further away also reduces the amount of panic 
panic options your opponent might try and throw out to get out of its way. So in reality, its effective range is a little more than this is still, but not much. And if we're talking similar effective ranges, Lucas doesn't have bad kill power, and it is nice that he can drag opponents into the blast zone, unlike with Ness's single hit, but it doesn't have quite the same level of cheese, and that cheesiness is really the only purpose of going for a move that can be so difficult to land. Now, one point that is legitimately in his favor is his PK Thunder will not fizzle out on opponents like Ness's will unless you hit the tailor with the very beginning of it. His will power through them, so he does have a bit more freedom with setups. They both are very floaty characters with long-lasting double jumps, so it does give them more opportunity than a lot of characters to go off stage and line something like that up. Again, Ness can take a better advantage of that than Lucas can, so I think he's gonna get a B tier? That seems reasonable. If we're designating C tier as niche is as specific as a shield break set up close to zero and F tier is useless, I don't think PK Thunder fits into either of those categories. Lucas is going to go down in C tier. Technically usable, but so much less desirable than Ness's. Donkey Kong Spinning Kong. In the air, this is a carry move. It drags your opponent all the way to the blast zone and then launches them into it. And DK is actually a pretty good edge guarding character. His back air is very, very good at setting opportunities for Spinning Kong to be used. He's got his notorious forward throw, which is extremely extremely good at setting up edge guarding scenarios in Ultimate. That said, this one doesn't always launch your opponent towards the blast zone. It depends on which side of DK they end up on on the final hit, and in practice in the use cases you have for this, I'm gonna say it works out more often than not, but certainly something to take into consideration. And another big one to take into consideration, uh, remember when I was talking about how the hero spin height was an issue? Well, that's far worse here because it barely lifts DK into the air at all. Opponents can often go around it. It's such a huge problem that I think it drops it all the way down to B. Another drag through the skies kind of move though, the Piranacopter. This one can do the job, but it actually does it relatively reliably in terms of the direction it sends at. So it's very consistent, and Piranha Plant even has a little bit of maneuverability in it to help it connect better. That's all good stuff. The issue with this one though is that it's very weak. If your opponent isn't already at really high percents, it's just not worth going for because the most likely outcome is you're gonna die and they won't. And it's not the easiest thing to connect with because yes, it does have some maneuverability, but the acceleration into it isn't the quickest in the world and its hitboxes are quite small. Persistent, yes, but I personally still find it kind of hard to line up. I think that's a C tier. The lining it up thing is partially a skill issue. If this was a super strong kill move, it would definitely be worth learning to do more, but it's not. And then there's Wii Fit Trainer's Super Hoop, and I just basically included this to show how terrible one of these can be. Functionally, it's not really a kill move. It has basically no knockback, and the hits don't even chain into each other reliably. There are situations where you can go really deep off stage and use it against an opponent who has a bad recovery and has already had to burn their double jump, but that's so incredibly specific that I think no one's going to have a problem putting this one down in F tier. Let's do some more explosives. Snake C4. This is an extremely similar principle to Link's Remote Bomb. It's a detonatable explosive, minus any of that sort of technically also counts synergy with his up special because Snake's Cypher does not put him into freefall and isn't really a kill move. But Snake can stick the C4 to an opponent and also it can get stuck to him. So compared to Link's Remote Bomb, Snake can force that fight more. Basically, any time his opponent and him are close to each other, he can go, okay, it's C4 time. I guess that means it's a bit less niche as a self-destruct option, but let's be real, still very niche. F tier. Steve's TNT. In theory, it's the same principle behind it, but the fact that this one needs to be tripped to detonate in close proximity rather than you needing to manually detonate it yourself, that creates some interesting options. You can see situations where Steve, for example, hurls himself in his minecart into it, and it also hits the opponent along the way. There are actually way more scenarios like that, and then you start getting into being able to put it on top of blocks and stuff. Do you see that kind of stuff pop up a lot? No, but certainly more compared to the other two, so that one I think is actually going to get boosted all the way into B tier. And then Duck Hunt's can. Okay, now we're talking. This is two things. It's a kill move, and it's a frame one combo breaker. This means that he can use it in the same way as something like Snake's Grenade to break out of combos early, and then it's also got kill power behind it. And that makes Duck Hunt going, oh, nah, 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 he's coming with me, a totally viable option. And it's something that you see pop up. It's just a great use case that Duck Hunt players are going to pull out all the time anyways, and if he decides to pull it out in a situation where it's appropriate for both their stocks to be taken, that's pretty reasonable. And because of that, this is an explosive going in S tier. Incineroar's Cross Chop. This move has so much going for it. First off, its power is incredible. Essentially, if it connects with the sweet spot, your opponent is just dead. It's got armor on startup, so Incineroar players often use it preemptively to get themselves out of sticky situations. And on top of that, Incineroar has multiple very viable setups into it. He's got a famous one out of down throw at extremely early percent, so that one can connect sometimes. Another notable one is up air. Incineroar has an incredible up air. It's very much in the vein of someone like Mario, where it can platform combo, except it's a better kill option. And it leads directly into cross chop. There's so much in cross chop's favor here, but one thing that it doesn't have in its favor 
here, unfortunately, is reliability. Incineroar is relying on just the perfect hitbox to connect to get that really nice, smooth carry down. If not, he can knock his opponents away, but it'll often just result in Incineroar giving up a stock for nothing. The way up and the way down both have opportunities for things to go wrong, so as great as it sounds with everything I've said about it, it should be S tier. I really want to put it in S tier, but I can't because sometimes going for it just means throwing a game away for free. So I gotta put it down in A tier. It's a shame. It's so close. Maybe this is another one that I need to reevaluate later. And there are other moves on this list that have issues with reliability as well, right? You can fall out of the link spin attacks. That is a thing. To some extent, that exists for basically any multi hit and ultimate, including other great moves that we're gonna look at here. But it's so common on cross chop. Guys, just got some fun ones to work with. We got Flying Slam, we've got his Dan Air, and we've got the Bowser Bomb. Flying Slam is very easy to connect. One of the fastest command grabs in the game, frame six, as fast as a normal grab is allowed to be. And Bowser has combos into it, and he's great at pressuring opponents into shield. So connecting it, not really a problem. The question is, what happens afterwards? And unfortunately, it's not a particularly reliable kamikaze option. Yes, he gets to drag his opponent around, but the opponent also has influence over how that goes. Depending on how high Bowser's percent is, that will detract from his ability to drag his opponent in the direction he wants, which means often his opponent is just going to get hit by Flying Slam on stage instead. Now, that's good. It still does tons of damage and kills pretty reasonably in its own right. But remember, we're only interested in the self-destruct portion. The Bowser player is going, oh, I'm way behind. I really need to equalize stocks here to catch up. And if he doesn't manage to do that, that's considered a fail for this list. And it's also a fail if he dies, but his opponent doesn't. And sadly, that can happen as well because his opponent is able to get out of Flying Slam before he can. A huge caveat that needs to be applied to a lot of these Kamikaze command grabs, they don't technically actually kill the opponent. Even if you both reach the bottom blast zone, Bowser is guaranteed to die, but his opponent will always pop up and have a chance to recover. Now, most characters can't make it back from that situation, but there are a handful of matchups where that's worth noting. You do still see the show up in competitive play. It is a real option to go for. Sometimes it's just guaranteed. It does work more than you might expect it to, and it's attached to a fantastic standalone move. So my question here is between A or S tier, but I think because we're specifically looking at the Kamikaze option, and that part has so many flaws, it's more of an A tier than an S tier for me. And then as Dan Air versus Bowser Bomb, as far as the applications we're looking at, they're essentially the same. They're both not the fastest dive bombs, but they're not horrendously slow either. Dan Air is a bit quicker and a bit easier to line up because of the diagonal angle, but the difference isn't that substantial. And during the startup of the attack, they're both extremely powerful spikes. And after that, they still kill reliably off the top. You're obviously more interested in the spike because it's a guaranteed kill, especially in the kind of reversal situations at the ledge that you often see these moves be used in or in checkmate scenarios when the opponent is trying to get back, but having a backup option later on is nice. Down air, I think I'm going to go B tier. Uh, Bowser Bomb, pretty similar. There's not really that much of a reason to go for Kamikaze Bowser Bomb a lot of the time versus going for Kamikaze Down Air. Do I want to penalize it for that? Yeah, I think I do. On this particular moveset, it's directly outcompeted, so I'll put it down a tier from its higher level competitor. Since we just covered the Flying Slam, I'll do another very similar move, Kazuya's Heaven's Door. As a standalone move, certainly on stage, I'm going to say it's not as good as the Flying Slam is. It's much slower, frame 14 versus frame 6, and it's also on a slower character, but its fundamental properties are pretty similar. The dive bomb potential, the ability for both Kazuya and his opponent to control the trajectory based on their percentage. This is another move that has armor on it, which is a point in its favor in terms of ease of landing. Doesn't show up too often in general gameplay. He does have one colossal advantage over Bowser though, and that's that this can be comboed into out of the Electric Wind God Fist, which is arguably the single best close quarters combat duel that Ultimate has. And because he's going for this more often than doing the move raw, it means that he can move his opponents closer to the blast zone, so some of that drift control factor is mitigated. And in reality, you see this show up a lot more as a viable option compared to the Flying Slam. Like, a lot more. So much so that I think this one's getting a clear cut S tier. All of this applies to Rage Drive as well for the record, which I'm just folding into the same slot. Now, when he does it raw, he does stutter step forward slightly further, but for our purposes, they're close enough. Let's do something a little different here. Hero, Kaklang, and Kamikaze. Kaklang, uh, yeah, Kaklang sucks. The only thing you can do is run off stage above your opponent and try and line it up with just a completely random spin. 
And then even if you connect it, it's not good. Kamikaze, or Kamikaze, however that's supposed to be pronounced, as you might expect, is blatantly designed to trade stocks. It's a rare roll, that's a big knock against it, but it is very good at what it does. Huge hitbox, relatively quick startup, and the times you tend to be using this are when your opponent is cornered or whatever and you're rolling for an option to ledge trap them within the menu, so it's viable use cases actually aren't that bad. That one's going to go up into S tier because I'm going to choose not to penalize its rarity in this instance. It's one of those things where, yeah, most of the time you're not going to have it, but if you do happen to have it and you're in a scenario you can make use of it, that's great. Kaklang, that's definitely not the case. You need to go out of your way to fish for this, and the reward is not even that great for fishing for it. F tier, no questions asked. We did the Bowser Bomb, let's do the Yoshi Bomb. I mean, it's faster than the Bowser Bomb, but what else am I supposed to be praising here? It's a decent kill move if you scoop them off the ground, but if you're doing that, then getting the self-destruct is close to impossible, and offstage its kill power is not very good at all, and it sends opponents up, so if it doesn't kill, it's essentially a recovery boost. I'm not holding it in super high regard. Yoshi does have great air movement, so it's not the hardest thing in the world to line up, but why bother? This is one I may well end up revisiting. I'm putting it here because it's functional, but I'm not sure what's going to be reserved for F tier in the future. Let's do this little micro genre of moves here. Ike's Ether, Chrom's Soaring Slash, Cloud's Climb Hazard, I guess me Sword Fighter Stone Scabbard goes in there as well, Pyra's Blazing End. So Chrom's Soaring Slash, basically from the beginning of the game, has been the textbook example of that just like drag your opponent across the stage and then kamikaze down with them whenever you feel like it. A lot of the extended setups didn't really turn out to be that true, you can DI out of them, but some of the shorter ones are are real, and it's also just very good as a standalone stock taker in its own right. It's got a big hitbox, it's pretty quick to start up, it's fairly easy to just go out there and catch your opponent and bring them down with you, even if you do just catch them with a downwards hit, that'll still do the job. Ike also has reliable setups into Ether, nowhere near as reliable as Chrom Soaring Slash, but they do exist, and they're on moves like Neutral Air that you really want to be using anyways, and Ether is even better off stage than the Soaring Slash because it has a hitbox that goes way into the air as well as one coming down. It's one of the easiest moves in the entire game to catch people with as they're trying to recover. Its vertical hitbox is so lenient. Oh, and they both have armor on them, and for Ike in particular, it's really generous and pretty relevant. In last stock situations, it can be a bit ambiguous who's going to die first. As a general rule of thumb, Chrom tends to lose those scenarios, whereas Ike is much more reliable. But if you're a stock up with either character, you're gold. Most of what I've just said can be applied to Cloud as well. He doesn't have nearly the same generosity in terms of vertical coverage, and he doesn't have quite as reliable setups into it, although they still do exist. And he also doesn't have the same option to initiate the attack on stage and then go off stage with it that I can Chrom do, but as a trade-off, his starts up extremely fast. It's pretty common to see this used in reversal scenarios where the opponent gets just a little bit too greedy going off stage and suddenly they're just being dragged down into the abyss. When it comes to me, Sword Fighter Stone Scabbard and Pyra's Blazing End, they both sort of have the same issue for me. They cover a lot of space, particularly the Stone Scabbard, but they don't connect as reliably, and they don't have the same kind of sheer power that the other ones do here. Pyra kind of gets the worst of all worlds with this. She doesn't even really get to go up with it, which is a major advantage of this type of move, so she sort of has to use it to catch them on the way down, and even then, the scenarios where that will actually take their stock are so much less. So Ike and Krom are both getting clear-cut S tiers. These are both fantastic self-destruct moves. Cloud, I think, is going to go up there as well. It's maybe a little bit of a lower-tiered S, but still S. A tier is good. It definitely has uses, but it is a bit of a poor man's self-destruct in comparison. Blazing End, I think, is a B tier because you can use it to checkmate off stage. It's got a good hitbox on it, but you really have to go for the downward portion, and your opponent has to be in a vulnerable scenario. That still makes it more viable than the moves in C tier, I think but it is kind of a borderline one. Me Brawler's Soaring Axe Kick, it's actually kind of the same thing, just minus the sword. It's pretty strong. Now, it's not nearly as strong as some of these. Opponents with very good recoveries can survive it, and it's obviously got a stubbier hitbox compared to the sword moves, but it's very quick to start up, and Me Brawler is a setup character, so comboing into this is not too big of an ask. Not the most reliable multi-hit on the planet, but not too bad either, effective on the way up and on the way down. I think that'll be S tier. The Falcon Kick, and in comparison, the Wizard's Foot. See, this is interesting, because it's kind of like the bombs we looked at earlier, Falcon Kick never spikes, whereas Wizard's Foot does have a spiking sweet spot that transitions into a sour spot afterwards. The thing with the Falcon Kick, though, is it kills off the side instead of the top, unlike the Yoshi Bomb, and it's also really powerful, and it's consistently powerful, even way down the trajectory of the kick. And it also travels at a diagonal, which means it's a little bit easier to line up, and Captain Falcon's got a lot of moves that put opponents very low off stage. so even though it's a dive move that doesn't spike, it's still very strong at setting up checkmate scenarios. Wizard's Foot, on the other hand, is a dive that does spike, but the spike window 
Nintendo is not that generous and Ganondorf moves like molasses in the air so it can be kind of tricky to line up and the sour spot of Wizard's Foot launches opponents basically straight up. It is a kill move, it will kill at reasonable percents, but nowhere near as reliably as Captain Falcon's, especially because the scenarios that you're going to be using these in are generally going to be in the drop zone, which means your opponent actually has more leniency for surviving vertical knockback They're starting out below the stage. Falcon Kick still needs to be done totally raw and it's not exactly an insta-kill, so I am going to put it in A tier rather than S tier, but very good. And Wizard's Foot, I gotta put down in B because it's just less practical to go for most of the time. Something a bit different again, Jigglypuff. We got Rest and we got Rollout. There are a couple of reasons this can be considered a self-destruct move in Ultimate. It does still have the thing where you can sometimes get a kill on your opponent and while you're still sleeping they can come down for their revenge, although because Jigglypuff wakes up earlier if she lands the rest, which is not something that happens in the other games, this isn't really that common a scenario anymore. We're only looking at the times the scenario would pop up and because Rest kills so early and has multiple setups into it, it, it's still a viable thing to go for. That notion of I'm at high percent, I want to trade my stock for my opponent's low percent one can mean very low percent. And the other thing you can do is go for offstage rests and even though it kills purely off the top and most of those moves aren't being looked at here, because it has so much knockback it will still usually finish your opponent off. I'm a Jigglypuff player and I want to trade stocks with my opponent. A frame 2 move that can kill at 50%? That seems like a good way to do it, so that's gonna be S tier. Rollout, on the other hand. It is pretty strong, so I'll give it that, but it's not outrageously strong, and you have to charge it up for a long time so your opponent can absolutely tell what you're gonna be doing, and there's no taking it back. There's no mix-ups, there's no nothing. You start charging it up and then you fire it out, that's all you can do. Can't even really take advantage of her air mobility. I'll give it C, I guess, rather than F, because if you really want to go for it, there are some ways you can Jigglypuff has moves that send opponents at low angles, but why? Another little group of Fire Emblem up specials here, Marth. Roy, Corrin. Dolphin Slash's sweet spot has very good knockback, and Marth is a good edge guarding character. He's got great aerials to force his opponents into scenarios where Dolphin Slash can connect, and he's a relatively floaty character, so he can hang out off stage for a while. The big issue for Dolphin Slash is reliability. The sweet spot's very easy to connect on stage. Your opponent's basically always going to be in range for it, but off stage, you need to position yourself basically directly on the same horizontal plane as them, which opens you up to getting hit and ruining the self destruct scenario. Although, against closer ranged fighters, that's not as big an issue because it's framed one invincible against like another sword fighter though that's probably not a particularly viable thing to be doing and the sour spot is quite weak for roy's blazer it's just overall very weak it seems like it should be really good roy has incredible airspeed and he has strings that can lead his opponent directly into the blast zone and they still usually won't die because blazer just doesn't really do all that much they can and every once in a while you will see this pulled off but its knockback is really low the angle it stands out isn't that bad. And then finally, Corrin's Dragon Ascent is another carry move like Roy's Blazer. Uh, this one kills off the top, so it's kind of debatable whether it should have been on here to begin with, but you can angle it pretty aggressively, so it's guaranteed to kill Corrin. For Marth, I'm going to go B tier. There are situations where, for example, you're not in the right spacing to finish them off with a tip or forward air, but this will kill. And Lucina gets the same thing. I understand that specific scenario doesn't come up, but you're generally going to see both of them use it the same way. Roy's Blazer is a B tier as well. If it was just a little bit stronger, it would definitely be at least A tier. And then Corrin C tier. It's pretty decent for going for like Hail Marys with Corrin pointing upwards, but if you're doing that, you're often drifting back to the stage and that's not what we're interested in. Squirtle, Waterfall. This is essentially Blazer, except it actually kills reliably. And like with Roy, Squirtle has reliable carries across the stage, pretty good mobility, and the hitbox is huge. S tier. More elemental stuff. Firefox. Firebird. Firewolf. All three of these let you air stall and then give you full 360 degree control over your trajectory. Those are all really good properties for catching opponents off stage. That's not to say they don't have their weaknesses. Fox goes the furthest distance, but he also doesn't drag opponents with him and the knockback isn't incredible on it. Falco does drag opponents along with him and he's also got fantastic air movement, but Firebird goes far less distance overall and it also just doesn't really have much knockback. Both of these will kill in the right scenario, but neither are that reliable. Wolf also has amazing air movement and his Fire Wolf does drag opponents with him and does kill. The catch is that its range is not very good. So that makes it a little bit finicky to connect, and it's got good kill power, but nothing absolutely mind-blowing, and it kills off the side, so no spike at any point. Uh, I think A tier, I'm kind of debating between A and S. I think it's just a step below the moves in the category above it. Fox is more like a C tier. What's the point of going for a self-destruct if you're the only one destructing? And... 
Same with Falco. You know what the best of all worlds with this is? Sephiroth's Octoslash. It's still got the air stall, it's still got the omnidirectional property, and then it's got the travel distance of foxes, the drag potential of Falcos, and the kill power of wolves, and that gets even better if he's in his one wing form. I think this is a contender for the single best self-destruct move in the game. You see this show up in high level play all the time. It's so hard to avoid. And then me Sword Fighter Skyward Slash Dash is kind of the budget version of this. Literally, it didn't cost extra. Budget Octa Slash, when we're talking about a self-destruct tier list though, that's still pretty good. It's actually quicker and it's still got great travel distance, still has a generous hitbox in front of him. The big problem with this one is that it's not especially strong. Dragging a lot of characters into the blast zone with you will still often be enough to finish them off. And you know what's better than hoping they can't make it back? just killing them. But still, very solid A tier, borderline S. Sephiroth's other kamikaze is down air. This one does not spike the entire way down, but the spike window it does have is quite good, which is important because if he doesn't land the spike, it's not really that impressive, doesn't kill until past 100% near the ledge, and it can send you in either direction. Sephiroth does have the one wing form, which in addition to powering up his moves, it gives him an extra jump, and that makes it actually quite easy to set this up. I'd say that more than compensates for the fact that it's another dive that goes straight down. In fact, when he has that out, I'd say it's maybe the easiest dive to line up in the entire game. It's definitely got to be up there. He doesn't always have one wing, obviously, which is a problem. Um, we haven't done too many diving down airs yet. I guess we'll get to that next. But compared to something like Bowser's down air, this is similar in the sense that it doesn't spike the entire way down, but the one wing form thing is a big deal. Okay, I think I'm gonna let this one slip into A tier. The horizontal range is not impressive at all, but it also helps that the vertical distance of his sword is so good it sticks way below him. Let's do a couple more. Toon Link, another sword plunge. Properties of this one are honestly pretty similar to Sephiroth's in a lot of ways. Decent startup, it doesn't spike the entire way down, but the window's pretty good. Not especially impressive if you connect the sour spot. What he doesn't have is the one wing form, but what he does have is A, floatiness, and B, bomb setups. Which you don't see Toon Link players tend to go for a whole lot in practice, but they are on the table. The sword is also directly below Toon Link as opposed to Sephiroth where it's a bit in front of him, so you've got to get slightly closer to your opponent to use it, but not too much. I don't think the drift matters an insane amount there. I do think the one wing form is more important for going for kamikaze setups than the bomb is, even though the bombs are always available and the one wing isn't. They're pretty close to each other. This is tough. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna go up in A tier along with Sephiroth. Let's do some more. Dive kicks this time. Stereo Suit Samus. I think this is the premium example of this kind of down air. It covers diagonally, it's very quick to start up, Zero Suit Samus has great mobility, including a third mid-air jump to line herself up, and it spikes the entire way down. That's a huge perk in its favor, and she can cover a lot of ground when the opponent is trying to make it back. If any of these dive kicks are gonna be S tier, this is probably the one. Sheik has basically all of the same properties as Zero Suit Samus, the diagonal angle, the fast startup, even a very similar third jump to get herself into position to use it. That's all great. What she doesn't have is the persistent spike. She does have a sour spot on it, and it's actually a pretty nasty one, and it comes up pretty early in the move. Those are gonna knock it down to A tier. Min Min has basically the same down air, but what she doesn't have is any of that air movement to try and get herself in position. She does have a better ability to set opponents into uncomfortable positions off stage. Her arms are infamously good at that, and also because of that, realistically, she's just gonna opt to stay on stage and use the arms instead. That's not really a factor for this list. We're more looking at the times where she wouldn't be confident with that approach and does want to go off stage and trade stocks, in which case she would have a really hard time lining it up compared to Sheik. Yeah, I think B tier. Ridley's Dan Air, notorious for being one of the worst Dan Airs in the game, if not the worst. Purely looking at self-destruct opportunities though, you know, not bad. The main point in its favor is that Ridley is another multi-jump character, so he can really go off stage for a long time and set them up. Outside of that, it's nothing particularly impressive. It does spike, but the spike hitbox is really not very generous, and if you get the sour spot, it's a decent kill move, but not incredible, and it's got the issue of sending your opponent either direction, and it goes straight down so its coverage isn't the best. It is really quick though, it's actually quicker than any of the dive kicks on overall much faster characters than we've looked at here. And with that multi-jump, I'm actually gonna go A tier. I'm looking at Bayonetta's dive kick here and realizing that I actually messed this one up. The rules are if you can short hop off the ledge and make it back, you're not eligible, and she can do that pretty comfortably. So, whoops. In that case, let's wrap up Ripley. We've got the Wing Blitz, and we've got the Space Pirate Rush. So as far as command grabs generally go, Space Pirate Rush isn't in the absolute upper echelon. You know, it doesn't have a lot of setups into it, it's a bit slow, but it's a solid move, has good range on it, does good damage, can kill. It's got some pretty harsh properties when you're trying to use it as a stock trade, though. Ridley does have multiple jumps, but even with that in mind, the slow startup of this can make it a bit difficult to line up in the air. And there's the percentage-based mash aspect, so even though his opponent can't control its trajectory at all, they can sometimes mash 
out of it before they even get down to the bottom floor. Wing Blitz, on the other hand, is kind of a Firefox style move, not nearly as generous with the angles, you can only choose between four, but they're useful. The most notable one by far is angling it downwards, it's a huge powerful spike the entire way down, so not too bad to connect at all, but the slanted sideways variants work as well, and they're really strong. Space Pirate Rush, I've got to give a C tier, and it's probably the best C tier on this list, you can make a borderline argument for it. It is more practical to go for than many of these, but the results just aren't there. Wing Blitz, on the other hand, S tier. Versatile, can be really hard to avoid, pairs well with Ridley's multi jumps. Solid. Let's do Meta Knights here Mock Tornado, Dimensional Cape, and Drill Rush. I included Mock Tornado because it's got some interesting technicalities behind it. Everyone knows that this is a very, very powerful offstage kill move. The thing is, Meta Knight usually makes it back if he goes for that. For it to be considered a self-destruct move, he has to travel towards his opponent far enough that he's not going to have time to drift back, and what that means is he's connecting the sour spot of it. And now I'm stepping in and editing to say that I did some initial tests on a lot of these before I started out, including the Mock Tornado, but during more extensive testing that I had to do while I was recording, it actually turns out the sour spot is better than I gave it credit for, so I'm going to skip the rest of the Mock Tornado segment for now, and then at the end of the video when I'm making some tier list adjustment placements anyways, I'll revisit it. Dimensional Cape, Meta Knight is one of the best candidates in terms of just character attributes for kamikaze moves, tons of jumps, decent air movement, and fantastic at putting his opponent off stage with the rest of his toolkit on top of that, and Dimensional Cape is a very strong move, if it connects on an offstage opponent they're basically always dead, fully omnidirectional as well, that's always great, the issue here is it's very specific, it's slow and if Meta Knight ends up on the wrong side of his opponent it's going to send them back towards the stage instead of away from it, so you kind of need the spacing of the gods to pull it off, still more viable on Meta Knight's kit than most characters but not the most viable thing in the world, B tier, Drill Rush though, now we're getting somewhere. Take everything good I just said about Meta Knight, and on top of that, add a colossal, steerable hitbox that reliably sends in the same direction, carries your opponent to the blast zone, has good knockback on it. This is an incredible self-destruct move. Easy S tier. Sora's got his own little drill rushy thing, Sonic Blade. This is an extremely versatile move. You can do this up to three times, including any angle on some of them, and you can even do it out of up special so you've got multiple opportunities to chase your opponent into the air. You are going to have to chase them pretty far because the knockback on this isn't particularly good, but Sora can do that. He's one of the floatiest, most air-centric characters in the series. He's got projectiles to put them in bad situations as well. Now, you're not always going to be able to send your opponent exactly where you want to. Just because you can pick the angles on the Sonic Blade doesn't mean they're always going to be carried perfectly by that. And you really do need to chase them out there, which even for Sora, who can do it better than basically any other character, that is an issue. I think a solid A tier. If it was a bit stronger, it would be S. Another move you can say is in the same category, depending how loose you want to be with that, is Lucario's Extreme Speed. We're getting into pretty extreme precision required at this point, though, because while yes, it is omnidirectional and you can even change your direction mid flight. It only has a hitbox at the very tip. This also scales up with Lucario's aura, and at low aura, it's really weak. At high aura, it becomes very strong, but his travel distance also changes with the aura. Extreme speed at the best of times can still be difficult to control, even experienced Lucario players will occasionally SD trying to go for a tricky angle, and the further this move goes, the more you may need to bend it to try and stay under control. Especially in the ideal scenario, right, where you're at high percent and have a lot of aura, and your opponent is at low percent, so that's the ideal time to be trading a stock with them, so your attacks are going to be sending them not especially far off stage, and then you're trying to chase them with this extreme long-ranged thing that you have to try and rein in, and that's hard to do because of how fast it is. It's a cool stunt move and I've seen it work before, but realistically I think I gotta go C tier. It's just so unreliable, and the dynamic aura travel distance thing is putting just another bump in the road of what's already a really difficult move to connect. Never spikes, won't always kill. Something that does spike? Me Gunner's Cannon Jump Kick. This isn't the most powerful spike in the game, it won't reliably kill the entire roster until higher percents, but it's good enough, it'll kill a lot of them earlier, and it's got a pretty generous hitbox and is very quick to start up, and you've got the backup kill option of the main attack which kills off the top. Now, generally speaking, killing off the top is a very good thing and it's a big perk of the move, but for kamikaze scenarios where you're going off stage to meet them, not as good as killing off the side because then you get an early kill. So for what we're looking at, you really want that spike and it's not the worst thing to connect and Me Gunner has ways of getting out there pretty well with stuff like reverse fair. Overall though, Me Gunner is not an especially mobile character and you're asking for a relatively precise placement despite the little bit of leniency in the hitbox size, so B tier I think? Oh, 
And of course it goes without saying that she has projectiles to help set this up as well, but still a bit on the finicky side despite that. Let's do Shulk here. We got Backslash and we got Air Slash. The base properties of Backslash aren't too bad for stock trading. He gets a pretty generous hitbox, fully persistent. It's got a little bit of an air boost to let him get further towards his opponent. Kill power is not bad, nothing particularly impressive either, but of course with all of Shulk's moves, you need to take his Monado Arts into account. So when you're using Smash Art alongside the Backslash, then suddenly it actually becomes kind of a tank. And then of course it gets even stronger if you hit your opponent in the back, although realistically most characters don't recover that way. Air Slash is where things really pick up, though the hitbox on this is just ridiculous and it has pretty good kill power on top of that, even without Monado Arts. And then when you bring them in, it gets even better. You've got like Speed Art and Jump Art and you've got that classic forward air into forward air into Air Slash string. Air Slash I think actually gets S tier as a result. And Backslash, what do I do with you? I think A tier, if this was a reliable kill move, like if it dragged his opponent down with him, it would be an easy S. The trajectory of Shulk's moves also just don't really set up for it nearly as well as they do for Air Slash, but it's good. Corrin's down air, and let's just get the last of the Stalin Falls out of the way with Banjo, or at least all the Stalin Falls that characters can't survive. Corrin's down air is a bit different than the others we've looked at. It's a drag down move, so it doesn't generally finish opponents off completely, basically only when Corrin goes into the blast zone before the move ends, which limits that aspect of just a true kill move, so you're relying on an opponent not being able to make it back after you drag them down. Having said that though, it drags opponents pretty far and the entirety of the move drags down. There's no real sweet spot on it, so it's dangerous throughout its entire duration. That is a big deal. Go straight down with no leeway, that is a problem. It's at least reasonably quick though, so not that bad to line up. Should mention that on stages with walls, Corrin actually can survive after using this by using pin. We're obviously not looking at those use cases. That is actually a bit relevant because it makes the move easier to line up on opponents who are hugging the stage. Corrin doesn't need to be worried about opponents going under it. A lot of its traits are relatively mediocre, but that drag down aspect is a big deal. It's that security of, I'm going to go off stage if my opponent is in even a little bit of a rough situation. And if I connect this, there's going to be no funny business. They're not going to get popped up because I hit a sour spot. It gives me tons of leeway with lining up the vertical timing on this. It's a really long hitbox, which makes that even more generous. I think that lets it move into A tier. Compared to something like Min Min's Dive Kick, for example, I think it's pretty clearly a step ahead. And then we get to Banjo and Kazooie's Dan Air, and I don't think they can survive doing this around stage height. Uh, they get close with their grenade catch tech, but I couldn't get it to work. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Let me know if you can. But for now, we'll count it and... Man, they were not kind to this one. It goes straight down instead of diagonal, so it's got worse coverage. It's got a reasonably powerful spike on it, but nothing insane, and the window for it sucks. It transitions to the sour spot really quickly, and the sour spot is absolutely pathetic. Sends your opponent almost straight up with bad knockback. Yes, Banjo-Kazooie are a multi-jump character, and they even have an explosive projectile to help them try and set up for this, but even with all of that going in their favor, I think this is going to be the only C-tier stall and fall down air. I don't know why this one is so crap compared to all the others, why they decided that was necessary from a balance perspective at all, but it is. I, it's not good. I'm sorry, Banjo players. Let's do the last couple of pseudo stall and falls here with the Miis. Me Brothers Head on Assault is Yoshi Bomb or Bowser Bomb works very similarly, except this one is a brutal spike the entire way down. Not only that, unlike, say, the Bowser Bomb, this one spikes even if you get them with with a scoop hitbox at the beginning, and that scoop still lets you move them off stage. And, as I mentioned earlier, Me Brawler is a setup character. He's got setups into the head-on assault. Not the fastest startup in the world, and it does go straight up and down, no diagonal leniency, but solid A tier to me. And then Me Swordfighter's Power Thrust is essentially the Falcon Kick, except it doesn't have that move's absurd power if you do it off the side of the stage. Still pretty quick, still a good hitbox with diagonal coverage, but the payoff is not anywhere near as good as the Falcon Kick, so I gave that one A tier, I'm gonna give this one B tier. Little Max Jolt Haymaker. It was a bit borderline whether I was going to count this one. If you do it directly beside the side of the stage, you can recover, which doesn't apply to most of the side specials, although it does apply to a lot of the up specials. If he goes out there with any kind of real distance, though, he's not making it back, so I am going to include it, and you know what? It's really good at what it does. Very generous hitbox. It doesn't have the absolute furthest travel distance of all the side specials we've looked at, but very tall, and it does have decent distance. It's got a fast startup. The actual travel velocity is quite quick, and it's brutally powerful if it connects. There's no setup potential or anything like that, and Little Max certainly can't hang around in the air for a long time trying to line it up, but the hitbox does mitigate that to a large degree. It's really not difficult to land, and the payoff is there. A tier. Another sideways zoom thing here. Mithra's Photon Edge. Mithra is a very quick character who can get in her offstage opponent's face and make them panic easily, jump or air dodge preemptively, and that makes the Photon Edge pretty easy to line up. It's helped by having a pretty generous hitbox on it and going quite far. It's not an incredibly quick move in terms of startup, but it also grants you a little bit of 
an air stall so you can use it to line that up better. The horizontal hitbox on this one is also really big and it extends pretty far basically as soon as it starts up. So in practice, you do legitimately see this used at high level competition. Drags your opponent far enough towards the blast zone that at any reasonable percent, this will kill pretty reliably. So I think in the same vein as Little Mac, that's going to be A tier. Might as well wrap Mithra up here. Chroma Dust, Array of Punishment. This is very reminiscent of Shulk's Air Slash, appropriate since they come from the same series, but it's a lot weaker. Like, it's a lot weaker, and there's no potential for Monado Arts to boost it. It doesn't matter if you're going for the spread shot or the single shot, you need to get your opponent almost into the blast zone, and then at like 100% it starts killing, which is not the most unrealistic scenario in the world, but compared to a lot of stuff we've looked at here, can you really be impressed by it? The move itself is really fast, and it's got a great hitbox. There are all these things in its favor, but I can't justify going for a self-destruct option at like 90% after exhausting all your opponent's options and it won't even kill them. <sighs> It feels so wrong to put this in C tier, but B tier feels weird. All right, uh, I'll go B tier because the use case of your opponent is at very high percent and you're chasing them super deep off stage is really narrow in those kinds of niche situations where the right option is to go for up special. At the very least, it's really easy to connect. So easy that if this killed reliably off stage, it would be absolutely disgusting. One more zoomy sword move to worry about here, me sword fighter's gale stab. It's got a very skinny hitbox and it's not especially powerful, particularly if you don't charge it up. If you charge it up, it gets much stronger to the point where it's a viable kill move near the blast zone quite early. But if you're doing that, you're obviously telegraphing it to your opponent. That said, it does release and travel very quickly, and it's got really good range on it, even if you don't charge it up. I'd say those are enough to let it have a place, although you really do need to be quite specific with exactly how you line it up, and the telegraphing is not helping. As I've mentioned with me, Swordfighter before, he does have stuff like Chakram to force his opponent into uncomfortable positions off offstage. Uh, uh, B tier? It's got a role to play, but not much in terms of setup potential, and you need to be fairly precise with it. Another precision move, Wolf Flash. Not too precise, though. You've got three different hitboxes on this. You've got the sweet spot, which kills fairly reliably. You've got the real sweet spot, which spikes and is basically a guaranteed kill. And then you've got the sour spot, which does nothing. But if either of the first of those two connect, you're happy, and they're really not that bad to get. Wolf's got fantastic air movement, and he's got that great neutral air for putting opponents into uncomfortable situations off stage to line it up. So you can certainly do that. It's viable, but what puts this one over the top are all the setups into it. Depending on the character and the weight, he's got down throw into wolf flash. He's got forward air into wolf flash. Back air into wolf flash, that's a thing. And then the same thing with neutral air. And he can even chain these together so he can carry his opponent across the stage at low percent and finish them off with a kamikaze wolf flash. And it's not even really that fancy or impractical. You actually see it show up reasonably often in competitive play. That is a clear cut home run S tier right there. Zelda with Ferrari's Wind. This is another move like Corrin's Dragon Ascent where it kills more off the top than the side, but but it has so much vertical knockback that going for it, even if your opponent is closer to stage height, can still work out for you. And it can kill off the side as well if you hit them really close to the blast zone. Obviously, this is a teleport move. It's got a fixed distance and it takes a little bit of time to get there. Not so long that your opponent is necessarily going to be prepared for it in an offstage situation. And you do have full control over the direction and the hitbox is fairly big. So if you're going for a vertical kill in that space, not too bad. You just need to wait until your opponent's at a reasonably high percent. If you're going for a horizontal kill, though, much more specific because this is another move that just sends opponents towards whichever side of Zelda they were on, and with sour spots on the sides of the move to boot. Decent amount of stuff going in its favor, so B tier. Actually just added Dr. Mario because I totally forgot to include him, so let's do him while we're here. The super jump punch is, for the most part, a pretty bad choice for a self-destruct option. It's extremely powerful, it does have that going for it, but the power is only in its pretty precise sweet spot. After that, it's absolutely useless. The nichest of niche gimping tools on opponents who have already burned their double jump at absolute best. And Dr. Mario is just a potato in the air, he has miserable mobility. It's really hard for him to line this up. But Dr. Mario also has pills, which actually travel at a great trajectory for edge guards, and Super Jump Punch is one of his ideal punishes out of it. It's not his only great punish, down air will spike, and then Dr. Tornado also sends out with a ton of knockback and could potentially even let him make it back. So there's no necessity for him to go for a kamikaze option, but he can, and it works really well with the pills. Without them C tier, maybe even F tier, he really does struggle that much to get in position, but with them, 
Solid B, Diddy Kong's Monkey Flip. Great traits on this, it's a fast, far-reaching command grab where you can just cling to your opponent and sync with them. Now, you are just syncing with them at normal speeds, you're not diving towards the bottom blast zone, so you need to pick your positioning a bit carefully. It doesn't hold them for that long, so you're not really going to be getting kamikaze kills off this from, like, a stage height too much. Diddy's got some reasonable offstage interruption with his banana peel as well. It's not the best projectile for forcing opponents to do weird stuff off stage, but it's there. In the scenarios where you do want to try and pull this off, it's pretty effective and it's not too hard to land, so B tier. Another where do you think you're going kind of command grab, Robin's Nosferatu. I don't find this one to be particularly easy to line up. It's got a decently sized hitbox, but it's obviously nothing like, you know, Diddy's monkey flip throwing himself forward like that, and it's got some startup time. Once again, not going to be taking any stocks at stage height, and Robin's got the item system, and Nosferatu only has three charges, and then he got to wait a bit, so it's not always going to be there when you need it. He's got the books, like Diddy has his banana peel, so you can do that for some offstage interruptions, but do I want to be using this in the same way I want to be using the monkey flip, which is already kind of a niche option? Not really. Uh... C tier seems appropriate for this one, especially when you factor in the materials issue. Bowser Jr.'s Abandoned Ship. This is a precision move in the sense that it doesn't have a persistent hitbox on it, but you can activate the hammer swing whenever you want, so all you really need to do is time the trajectory of this so it gets close to your opponent. And that trajectory has really good coverage on it, it sends Bowser Jr. very high, and the hammer swing is incredibly powerful. Has a reverse hit on it, but you've got a fair amount of leniency to make sure they're on the right side of you. Bowser Jr. does get some drift, and it's even got some setup potential into it. You do need to know your percentages pretty well for that to work consistently, but once you do, it's not too hard to connect. I'm kind of debating between A and S tier for this one. A seems a bit more appropriate, just looking at the tier above where you've got these god tier insta-kill moves and ones that are incredibly easy to connect. I don't think this is quite up there. It does a lot though, it's really respectable. Wario's Chomp. This is vaguely reminiscent of something like Kirby's Inhale. It can't drag opponents off stage in the same way because Wario doesn't have a hitbox that really extends very far outside of his body, but it's really good as an edge guarding combo kamikaze option. Wario has fantastic air mobility, some of the best in the game. It's a persistent hitbox, it starts off really fast, he can keep them in his mouth for a long time before he's forced to spit them out. I think A. Me Brawler's Helicopter Kick. If you're picking this up special, a huge part of your game plan is comboing into it for really cheesy early kills, which Me Brawler is not often going to be kamikazeing with off the most common setups, but this is kind of in the same vein as the spin attacks where it's got this really big hitbox that's pretty easy to adjust to exactly where you need it and it kills stupidly early. And Me Brawler's got that same persistent nair to try and mess opponents up and he's got really good moves to force opponents into that trajectory. He does have some setups which are more self-destruct based and he's got a sort of Zero Zoot Samus light move to help position him where he needs to be when he wants it. I haven't mentioned that yet. Yeah, I've seen so many stocks get robbed by this. This has to be S tier. And then another Me Brawler move, Suplex. I think he might be the most represented character on this list. And stepping in after the fact here, this is about where my sound card started freaking out, so I'm gonna have to do these again in post, that's why the webcam's gonna disappear for part of this. Could have been a lot worse for the record, it was just the last two entries and a bit of cleanup I gotta redo. This could have happened with hours of recording, and I wouldn't have known until I started editing. So Me Brother Suplex, relatively fast move, and it has some setup potential into it, goes a decent distance. Your opponent doesn't have control over the trajectory, now neither can you, it's always the same backdrop, and this means that if you're in an advantageous position, you can't really drift drag your opponent off the stage too well, you mostly need to be in a disadvantaged state. This is one of those many command grabs that your opponent will always arrive at the bottom blast zone, and it doesn't make you travel that far horizontally, so more characters will be able to survive in this scenario than usual. Still, fast command grab with some setup potential, sounds like an A tier to me. And then we have Ganondorf's Flame Choke, bookending at least the initial list with another huge fan favorite. This one doesn't have much in terms of proper setup potential into it, but it's still a relatively fast command grab that travels a good distance. He also does have kind of a setup into it, he can down his opponent at the ledge and then go for a read from there, so there is something. And you can use it in an advantage state or disadvantage state, both options work relatively well. And it will also properly kill your opponent alongside you, they won't be popped out at the very bottom. That's all good stuff, but unfortunately this move took a couple of major nerfs in Ultimate that make it a lot worse than in previous versions. Your opponent can mash out of it, and yes, in practice you actually do still often see this connect, your opponent doesn't necessarily even comprehend what's going on until it's too late a lot of the time, but in theory the mash window is actually relatively generous, more than I think it should should be, and Ganondorf dies before his opponent, which as I said earlier applies to a lot of these command grabs, but this one is worth pointing out because in every previous game that didn't happen. I wish I could put it in an S tier, it's definitely one of the best known self-destruct moves and I'd love to, but unfortunately it's gotta go down in A. And then as I mentioned I'm adding Meta Knight's Mock Tornado, specifically the Sour Spot because you need to be able to travel far enough that you won't be able to make it back, which is still, as it turns out, pretty good. Your opponent doesn't need to be insanely close to the blast zone or at insanely high percent for this to connect, and it's not that hard to connect, yes it doesn't travel 
travel up very much, but it starts up really quickly and travels very fast horizontally. And the vertical hitbox on it is pretty generous. For the most part, I would say it's definitely outcompeted by Drill Rush, and it does have some flaws of its own, but very solid B tier, upper B tier. And honestly, I could add the shuttle loop to this list as well, because there are a relatively large amount of ladder combos that end in a shuttle loop where Meta Knight can't make it back to the stage, so it does turn into kind of a kamikaze move, but I think I'm going to leave that one off. This list has already ballooned out a bit more than I originally intended it to. There are a couple more that I'm going to add, though, that I either completely forgot to add the first time around, or the first time the criteria expanded, I should have included them. The first of these is Greninja's Substitute. If he chooses a downward angle, he can't come back from it. That one's going to get a B tier because it's only really usable on recoveries with hitboxes, which means it's not good in all matchups, but in the matchups it is good in, it's actually very effective. And then DK's Cargo Throw, which I was considering putting on in the first place, I decided not to, but I think for the sake of completeness I'll include it now. If you're in a position where your opponent is at high enough percent where you can just grab them and run off stage and get both of you, you could probably have just gotten partway down, thrown them, and then still made it back, so it's more of a show-off thing than anything else. There may be some scenarios where this is optimal to do, but the vast majority of the time what you're going to end up with is either opponents who can mash out of the cargo throw, or who can't, in which case you can just throw them and make it back anyways. F tier. And then looking at how the entire list played out, I'm going to make a few adjustments, the first of which is going to be Duck Hunt's can down to A. I think it's just a bit too niche compared to most of the options above it. Jigglypuff's rest is going to move down as well. Not only is it again a little bit of a niche move compared to some of the others, but also there are situations where you get the kamikaze by accident. The odds are when you do this that it's not going to be a stock trade, so when it is, sometimes you didn't necessarily want that. And then Ridley's Wing Blitz is going to move down to A. Yes, it's extremely destructive and pretty big, but it's slow. Slow enough to make it just a bit too hard to line up for us here. Ridley's Down Air is not slow, as I mentioned, it's extremely fast, but even with that, and even with the multi-jump thing, I think the sweet spot's just a bit too hard to line up, and the sour spot doesn't give you nearly enough. The circumstances for Sora are a little bit more specific than most of its peers. Going back to Ridley again, I think it was probably a bit hard harsh on the Space Pirate Rush. It's really not that bad to use. It certainly shouldn't be in the same tier as something like Banjo's Down Air. A different command grab, Robin's Nosferatu, is going down to F tier because it's functional technically, but it just does not do anywhere near enough. And the same with the Yoshi Bomb. I said it might happen, and lo and behold, it's happening. I think I'll move Diddy's Monkey Flip down with it too, especially because you can also footstool off opponents' heads on that one. So really, how many scenarios are you even looking for a Kamikaze situation? Not that many. Me Sword Fighter's Skyward Slash Dash, I think I'm actually willing to move up into S tier here alongside Sephiroth's Octoslash. It feels a bit weird to put it there considering it's just basically a worse Octoslash, but it's just so easy to connect and it's a relatively effective move in its own right. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Like I said, there are some moves that are more open to interpretation for this. Would you want to say, oh, Pikachu's Quick Attack should be on here because you can use it to just go out there and gimp your opponent and steal their double jump and suddenly they're stuck off stage? You could, but personally I think that's stretching the definition of a self-destruct move just a bit too far. I sort of used Wii Fit Trainer Super Hoop to demonstrate that concept of a terrible move that only does interruption, and do we really need an F tier full of that kind of thing? Eh. But if there are any that you think you can make a case for, or that you think I just straight up overlooked, then let me know. I may do a follow-up as a pinned comment. But other than that, this is it. The definitive tier list for every single self-destruct move in Smash Ultimate. Thanks for watching, everyone, and let me know what you thought of the list. Likes and comments are a huge factor that YouTube uses to gauge whether a video should be passed around to more people, so if you think this one deserved it, much appreciated. You can check out an animation tier list above here, and then below it is a video on my main channel, Mock rock going over a redesign of Link, and patrons, YouTube members, and Twitch subs can get perks like early videos, Discord access, and voting on future content. Later, people!